Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and here we are at the nursery for our weekly nursery tour. Today we are going to focus on some of the shrubs that we have down here available for purchase immediately and stay tuned for the end because we're going to go up to the barn and talk about different like soil amendments, different fertilizers, all of those kinds of things that you can be doing right now in your garden because here in North Carolina, you can tell, I mean, it is a absolutely glorious day. It is, it's gotta be at least in the 70s. The sun is shining. I mean, there's hardly any clouds in the sky. We also have pollen falling, but we won't talk about that. Um, so this is a great time to get out in your yard. I was just talking to my mama and she was like, oh, Jenny, I have got some spring fever. I need to get out there and start planting still a little early for annuals i would not recommend that you are putting annuals in the ground that's just a word of caution but it is the perfect time to be putting perennials and shrubs and trees in the ground so that's what we're going to focus on today is shrubs now when i know that when you come to the nursery in the summertime and you see a hydrangea in full bloom it is really hard to resist getting that hydrangea right then as opposed to a pot of brown sticks but you've got to trust me and believe me that you will have much better long-term success when you buy your hydrangeas in this kind of state as opposed to being in full bloom again north carolina 7b our summers are really hot and humid and it puts a tremendous amount of stress on a plant when it's loaded in blooms and you stick it into a new environment in the ground and it does not receive the same kind of care as it does at the nursery. This is the perfect time to get them. This is incredible from Proven Winners, a fantastic um, hydrangea. I love these. These are most likely gonna be the ones that go in our patio as the hedge. Um, it is an improved version of the classic Annabelle. Just a great one. I'll open it up so that Jerry can show you all the information. It is sun. It is zones three to nine. Extremely versatile. Four to five tall and wide. You can tell that she does start to have a little bit of some buds coming out. So she's about to break her dormancy and to put on some, um, some beautiful leaves. It's a great time to get these plants. Not only um, hydrangeas are a fantastic time, like right now there's, um, this is the Rosa Sharon, the whole chiffon series from Proven Winners. I love these. There is, like I said, a whole series. It has a, a, a different bloom than your traditional Rosa Sharon. Just a very elegant, nice, pretty bloom. So there's the white, there's blue, pink, magenta, and then I wanna say, like a dark lavender. Again, it is full sun, zoned five to nine. Now this will be nice and tall, eight to 12 feet tall, but only four to six wide. So if you need something like a specimen, a focal point in your garden, then this is the perfect one to do it. Again, right now is brown sticks. It's not very attractive. You have to look forward to what it's going to be, not what you see right now. That's also a little bit of a life lesson for you. Um, so don't get stuck in the here and now. Look forward to what is to come. We know this is nice and healthy again because it's starting to have little bud swells on it. So it is nice and alive and very happy. They're not dead, they're dormant. Very, very different. Um, we were talking, Christine and I were talking, it's like, you know, when people get confused about what does it mean dead, they think it's dead versus dormant. And it's like when you're sleeping, right? When you're asleep, you're dormant but you're not dead, at least hopefully not. Um, same thing with the plants. So those are doing really well. Some more other ones that you might be interested in. This is the um, show off for Scythia from Proven Winners. You wanna talk about, oh my goodness, look at that. So we call, when I was growing up, we always called them yellow bells. So yellow bells are a classic sign that spring is here. Show off has much more blooms um, it's tighter you can see all of the buds that are on here these are all going to be your flowers in fact we have some right here jerry i'm going to turn it around for you real quick can you see that look at those those little swells um, 
tons of new growth down at the bottom. These are going to be neat because they're going to be a little bit taller. So show off is in that five to six foot range, kind of like that classic forsythia, a little tighter, not quite as um, wispy and wild as the old traditional forsythias or yellow bells. Another great one, and I love Scentlandia because now while it's not full of, you know, leaves right now, it does keep some of its foliage. And of course it has that great color, fall color to it. So Scentlandia is a sweet spire and it's called Scentlandia for a reason because it smells so delicious. It is going to be sun or shade, yay. It is a native plant, hardy in zones five to nine, two to three feet tall and wide. You will remember that bank bed that we did kind of behind the pergola. We put these in there down near the bottom. So and again, great shrubs thinking ahead. So of course, if you need some great foundation planting, love boxwoods, sprinters are doing great. Sun or shade, extremely versatile, very low maintenance, easy peasy. Another beautiful hydrangea that we fell in love with last year was Southern Living's White Wedding. Oh my heavens. It is an absolutely gorgeous hydrangea. So this one is going to be four to six feet tall, but only three to five feet wide. So it has just those beautiful, beautiful um, white blooms on it. Full sun, part shade, hardy in zones three to nine B. Very nice. It is a type of a, a paniculata. So again, that means it blooms on the new growth, which we love because you're guaranteed blooms every single year. Um, hugsters, hugster butterfly bushes. I mean, they're great. Nice and petite, nice, small, a two by two, covered in blooms. Butterflies go nuts over them. So if you have something that even up in a container, like if you're looking to fill in a container, need something to put in there, then these would be great. So you've got to start thinking about year round, what do we want, the four seasons of interest. Then this is a fun little guy. Jerry found this one um, on one of our local nurseries that we buy from for our some of our shrubs. This is called Black Dragon, and this is a cryptomeria. Um, just a really fun, funky shape. It's only going to be about eight feet tall. Obviously, it's an evergreen. This would be great as a focal point in a bed. You could put it off to the corner of the side of your house if, you, if you're looking for something um, to give you some height and some weight on the edge of your house. Again, remember, don't plant it too close. Spread away from your house. Give it lots of room to grow. But Black Dragon is just a lot of fun. Every time I come by, I can't help but um, rub my fingers over it because it is such an amazing plant. Um, and then of course azaleas. There are, we've got tons of Encore azaleas all through here. Encores we love because remember they bloom three times a year. So your spring, your traditional spring, then midsummer, and then late fall. So all again, I know I keep telling you this, but all of the Encore azaleas, their first name is autumn. So autumn, whatever, right? autumn lilac, autumn lily, autumn sangria, embers, everything, right? Because it's to remind you, hey, I bloom again in the autumn or the fall. So encores are great because they come just about in every color that you can imagine. They can come from like two feet tall, their mature size, all the way up to that five, almost six feet tall. So basically I tell people, tell me your color and tell me your size and we'll match the right encore with you. Um, and of course they do stay nice and green all year round. They're just great, easy peasy. Um, one thing that is really fun, talking about dead versus dormant. So again, Jerry found these. These are really fun. These are called fire chiefs and this is a type of fuja. Now people get their tongues twisted. So a fuja, let me show you the tag so you know how to spell it. So it's gonna be right here. So see the fire chief Thuja? So Thujas can come as this little tiny petite shrub all the way up to a nice big massive tree. Fire chief is really neat because it has this bronzing look to it. 
and all Fujas will get some of that bronzing effect in the cold. The temperatures do this. Again, this is not a dead plant. As the days get longer, the temperatures get warmer, guess what it does? It greens up. So, when you get a Thuja, do not freak out. In the winter time, if it starts to turn a bronzy color on the tips, it's not dead. If it were dead and I was doing this, guess what would happen? All the needles would fall right off. No needles are falling off. So, as soon as, again, the warm temperatures come, the days get longer, then this is a beautiful green. This is a great option for, um, you know, a foundation because it'll be like a four by four you can put it on the edge lots of things that you can do with this but personally i think it's a really fun plant i mean and obviously it's not pokey it's soft because otherwise i wouldn't be doing this with my hands so we love these fire chiefs um another thing roses we've got roses kind of all throughout we've got encores we've got drifts we've got the proven winners the oh so easies um if you have roses in your yard now is the time that you need to prune them. So roses will bloom on new growth, so you need to go and prune them. If you look on any kind of rose breeders website, whether it's David Alston, or it's Proven Winners, or it's the um, Knockout Roses, they will tell you to prune your roses. So these are some drift roses. I think this is popcorn. This is my personal favorite because popcorn, obviously it looks just like it sounds. It's a nice creamy white and also a yellow, but it smells amazing. And so you notice that we have come in here and pruned it. And it's also, look at all this new foliage that's coming out. So you have all this new foliage that is popping out. Again, roses bloom on new growth. So we want to prune them back. So that encourages new growth and hence we get more blooms. You do need to be careful and be watchful. Um, this has come up a lot in discussions with customers here lately um, about the rose rosette disease. This is um, a real problem that will go after the different roses. It is transmitted by a pesky little bug that will go in and start sucking on your plant. You know that you have rose rosette disease if the tips of your roses are really gnarly and just really twisted, then that means you have the rose rosette disease. If you were to catch it super, super, super early, there is a chance that you can save it. If it's been that way for a while and you notice that it is spreading, then you need to dig that up, don't put it in your compost pile, bag it up, put it in your trash can and get it off your property. Um, and then I would suggest waiting a while before you put roses back in that area unless you can properly take care of the soil and, and so forth and so on. But just as a little side note, those roses, you need to prune them this time of the year, late winter, early spring, right when you see that new growth happening, and be on the lookout for the rose rosette disease because that's not fun news that I have to tell people is that when they're telling me there are problems with their roses and um, that it starts to spread to other plants. Um, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've had to do that quite a lot here lately. All right, now let's come in here to the barn. Actually, let's not. Let's come over here first and then we'll work our way around. Now, for my people who are coming to see us, do not let this freak you out. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, she has sold out of the soil and that's all the land and sea she has. <laughs> No, we have pallets like everywhere. So we will restock before this weekend. So do not fret. We have got plenty of proven winners, potting soil and land and sea compost galore. Um, we will hit this in just a moment. But before we do, we have got two different options for you folks who want to amend your soil. First, let's go with this one. So this is called soil conditioner or pine bark fines. So there is no compost in here. It is just finely ground aged pine bark. Who uses this? Who needs this? This is for people that have that extreme clay conditions that you're growing and you're looking to aerate, bring some aeration to your soil so that um, it's not so compacted. This would be something, and Jerry can correct me if I'm wrong, that you're gonna work into 
not just your whole, but the whole bed, right? He says yes. Can you do it just the whole? Yeah, the, the, the soil coming out of the hole. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. So, we talk about the bathtub effect where we say never just put like potting soil in that bottom. hole, in the bottom of the hole, right? So, with the pine bark vines, you can dig your hole, right? You can mix in some pine bark vines into that, your native soil that you've pulled out. That provides that aeration. Again, nice big hole. You can do the whole bed. So, if you're creating a whole new bed, this would be great to kind of lay down nice and thick. And then it, as you're um, if you till it in or if you're, you know, digging your holes and you're working it in, this, the soil conditioner, pine bark finds, is really what's good to help with those really compacted clay type soils, okay? Then over here, this is the black gold. It is the natural and organic ultra outdoor planting mix. It's a mouthful. This is great stuff. So you can use this um, very similar to like the land and sea. Um, because it does have more of a compost effect to it. It does have some nice aged pine bark vines in there. So it will provide that aeration. It does provide a little bit of that nutrition with the compost. You can, again, work it into your native soil when you're planting, whether you're doing annuals, perennials, shrubs, Especially. trees. Hmm? Especially annuals and perennials. Especially annuals and perennials because it has that kind of that food for them. So this is a great one. Again, you can work it in. You can top dress your beds with this. Very versatile. Um, this was our first year using this. And as soon as we opened the bag, we were like, oh, this is really good stuff. So we, this is great. So got that, the black gold. And then coming over here, let's talk a little bit about fertilizers. So here we are at the checkout. Um, area at the nursery and we have obviously there's more over there you just saw that when we went past it um, we're big believers in the Espoma products they just we have seen the proof and that it's amazing so let's go through it real quick because there is some questions about fertilizing when where what what do I do okay so we're gonna break it down for you biotone Biotone is specifically when you first plant your plants. Whether it's a tree, a shrub, a perennial, you can do annuals if you want to. What this does is for, it develops a great root system, a really nice, strong, healthy roots. Because you know, if your root system is nice and strong and healthy, guess what? Your plant up top is nice, strong, and healthy. So this has the great, um, Mycorrhiza, I always get it backwards. Was it, is it the fungi? Bacteria? Fungus. Fungus. It's a fungi. 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 Well, fungus. Look on the back. Okay. Look, look on the back, Jerry says. I mean, that's like what I tell people. It's like, oh, just look on the back. It'll it tell you. It lists them all right there. It lists them all. Okay. Uh, right, room. Right. Oh, thank you. We've been outside all day, y'all, and the pollen is fallen, and we've been doing all sorts of different stuff, and you know me. Fungi. Fungi. Fungus. There's a fungus among us. Anyway, I digress. Biotone, great for your roots. Use it when you plant. Mix it in your hole. So you dig your hole, sprinkle it in the bottom. It tells you exactly, depending on what size plant you're planting, it'll tell you how much you use it. Sprinkle it in the bottom, put your plant in, put your native soil back, boom, you're done, okay? Now, the one that you're gonna get ready to use a ton of, there could be three of them, but the main one is Plant Tone. Plant Tone is the fantastic, all-purpose, can do just about anything, slow-release fertilizer. This is the one that I go through and do my perennials, my shrubs, anything that's in the ground, I go through before they start to have their new growth for the season, now is really a great time to do it um, and you're just going to um, sprinkle it around the plant so let's pretend my fist is the plant right let's say it's a hosta this is the hosta you take it you can have a little cup you can have your hands with gloves whatever you want to do and you're just going to sprinkle it's what we call side dress you're going to sprinkle the, the fertilizer around the main part of your shrub perennial whatever um, again, it will tell you on the side, the back, on established plants, like how much to use. This 
Last year, last spring was the first year that I did everything, that I fertilized everything and it was glorious. If y'all have seen pictures of my Linton roses here recently, I have never had so many blooms on them. My hostas came up just massive and huge. It's a great one. If you wanna get more specific, okay, then there's Hollytone. Hollytone is for your acid loving plants. And it will list you exactly on the side who is an acid loving plant. So off the top of my head, these would be rhododendrons, camellias, azaleas, um, a lot of times your evergreens. Those are all your acid loving plants. So this is gonna be a slightly different formula than your plant tone. If you can only find plant tone, then certainly use that. Um, just such a great, great fertilizer. All of these are. And really, this is gonna be, you're gonna do these once a season. Um, somebody had asked me with those Linton roses that were just in these glorious blooms, you know, do you fertilize every week? No, I don't. That's the great thing about like perennials and shrubs. You fertilize at the correct time and you're not having to be out there all the time fertilizing like you do your annuals, okay? And then the last main one, I guess that we're, you might be considering would be rose tone. Obviously, rose tone goes on roses. Interestingly enough, it can also be used on hydrangeas because the needs for the hydrangea and the roses are very, very similar. So if you have rose tone, you can certainly use that on your hydrangeas. I learned that from Laura. I think Laura learned that from one of the folks at Spring Meadows, who is the shrub supplier for all of our PW that was out here yesterday that we were talking to. So they were the ones that actually told us to use the rose tone. Um, Another thing I'm going to go through really quickly, of course, we have the garden tone. The garden tone is for your herbs and veggies. So if you're starting an herb garden, veggie garden, this is fantastic. Again, that slow release. It tells you exactly how often on the back to use it for your vegetables. Um, these you're going to use, I think, like once a month because obviously their production is a lot faster on that. And then last, we have garden lime. Because here we tend to be very acidic soil, so hydrangeas that are pH dependent will either be blue or like a dark purple. So if you want to have a pink hydrangea, then you're gonna have to add lime to your soil because certain hydrangeas, like I said, are pH dependent, meaning the color of the bloom depends on the soil's pH level. So a lot of times your macrophyllia hydrangeas, those, what we think of those traditional hydrangeas or those nice big mop heads will be soil dependent. Um, like your limelight, those kinds of things are not. So this would not affect that. Just know that if you have blues and purples, but you want a pink hydrangea, then you can use this and that will certainly help you. It will tell you on the back how to use it. Um, just know, even though we're not really promoting annuals yet, we have got plenty of Proven Winners water soluble plant food and their slow release plant food. I use these exclusively with my annuals. It does make a massive difference big huge difference the slow release is granular and it is um, heat activated so in the heat of the summer like right now there's no point in doing it because it's cold you're not putting annuals in the ground that's a great thing to add to the ground when you're planting your annuals because let's say you go out of town for a week 10 days and you're not there fertilizing your plants are still getting food i put this in my aqua pots in the water reservoir so that the water is fertilized and then this is the one that makes the difference. If you're looking for your flower powers for any of your flowering annuals, your petunias, your superbells, your angelonas, I mean, just if it has a flower and it's an annual, then you use this. Um, it just makes a massive difference. You mix it up one scoop and you throw it in one scoop per gallon. It comes in this great tub. Um, there's little bags that are sealed in here. And then you have your scoop it's one scoop per gallon. Normal um, watering cans are about two gallons, so two scoops per thing. And then you just water like normal. Um, makes a huge difference, guys, I'm telling you. And then save your buckets, because these buckets are amazing. Like, I'm still using them. I use it for like to help fill up my bird feeders. Tons of things to do with the buckets, so don't lose the buckets. Um, but I think, oh, one last thing. Ha ha ha, forgot to tell you. So we just got these last week at the end of, I think it was actually Saturday that they came. This is the Proven Winners Garden Idea Book and it comes out every year. 
it is simply that. It is an idea book for gardeners. So it will go through, let me just kind of take you on just a little tour. These are free here at the nursery, so you can come get them. But look, so like this is a perfect one for our southern climates. Can you feel the heat? So everything in here is great for those hot, hot climates. Um, it will tell you what the plants are. So when you're flipping through here and you're like, oh my goodness, I absolutely love this plant. What is in that container? Well, I know what it is, but I work at a nursery. You may not know what it is, but when you come over here, it tells you right here, it is the Double Delight Primrose Begonia. So it's great. So not only do you get the, so is the cake. do what? So is the cake. Oh, so is the cake. I'm at the point where just give me the cake. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I'm, and it's not awful. It's good, it's good. Uh, okay, so anyway, this is such fun. Like I haven't even looked through it yet, but they're, um, Oh my gosh. Okay, so example. Another example. So I'm telling you, you need this book in your life. And if you're not local to the nursery, you can go to Proven Winners and you can request one for free. They'll send it to you. So another idea. So here they have a recipe of the year. This is a shade one. So it's called, the name is Eclipse of the Sun. It tells you exactly what is in this container. But what's also awesome is that it tells you exactly how to plant it. Like it tells you where to put the plants in the pot so that it will look like this. So, I mean, if Proven Winners, one thing that they are all about is some education. And so they know, just like we know, that if we educate you and we teach you and you show you these things, then you're gonna be successful and you're gonna have great results. And then you're just hooked. Like, I'm sorry, it's like, sorry, not sorry. You're doomed for life. You're gonna be a gardener and you're just gonna turn into a crazy plant lady like the rest of us. And it's gonna be fantastic and you're gonna love it. Um, but. These are free at the garden center, so come by when you're, when you're here. Um, they're right here on the checkout counter. Grab one, take one home, just dog ear it, tear it up, and then you can come back to the nursery and you can go, hey, Jenny, I want this, and we will help you put it together. It happens all the time. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this a little bit helpful. Again, it is season is rapidly approaching for spring. Before you know it, I'm gonna say, okay, it's time. Come get all your annuals and let's get planting. Um, we are time for planting, just not quite on your annuals yet. I know, just hold on just a little bit longer. You've got this. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day. Bye, friends.